pour some watermelon on the scale and Holly Bear is a little confused she thinks she needs all three pieces we're not really sure how well Holly Bear likes watermelon she has rejected it once and then not rejected it another time so we're really not sure and she seems to be extremely fascinated with the three people out there who also have watermelon but they're for other bears Holly Bear also has to learn to respect the uh, fence which is an electric fence she has been uh, zapped with that once or twice before, but uh, PTZ driver, we have Lucky coming from the food shed. PTZ driver, we have both Lucky and Holly at the scale. I want to tell everybody here at the North American Bear Center, everything I say can be heard worldwide. And there's a very important person out there worldwide and that is the PTZ driver. I'm going to move a little, a little bit so I don't have so much background noise. I'll be on mic in one minute. I'm back on mic again and again I want to thank everybody for your patience and my moving locations and PTZ driver we have the following we have Lucky Bear getting a weighed and he was weighed today at 330 pounds we have Holly Bear she was weighed today she's right behind Lucky on the scale at uh, 101 pounds and we have Honey Bear who is just outside the uh, window den at 388 all those are good weights for this time of the year let's talk a little bit about um, all our bears here they these three have all been on the scale and uh, lucky happens to be eating his watermelon piece on the scale that for whatever reason that is his favorite place to eat watermelon don't know why but it certainly is and when we do put bears on the scale they always do get a treat we want that to be a positive experience for them so we don't have to work too hard at getting a weight on them for those of you here at the bear center when it's your first time being here I'll just quickly go over the three bears you see the cinnamon phase black bear or the brown bear which she's really not She's a cinnamon phase black bear. She's an 18 year old female, and her name is Honey Bear. She's got a gorgeous uh, coat on her, and uh, the light hair on her back, or the lighter fur on her back, is this last winter's coat that will be shedding here in the next month or so. She hibernates last, usually very, very late November, and tends to come out first. Uh, and this year this past April she came out the first week of April she's 18 years old and has never had cubs PTZ driver we have Holly Bear at the rock den taking a watermelon rind into the woods Honey Bear now is going to the rock den excuse me the rock uh, bridge and I think the plan is to cruise the pond and she's going to head off Holly Bear if Holly Bear attempts to walk around the pond notice the behavior of Honey Bear she just looked she took a look at exactly where Lucky is and she knows exactly where Holly Bear went Honey is very subtle with her uh, observations of the other two day bears but she she has a mission so I would suggest you watch Honey Bear, watch her eyes and her ear set. PTZ driver, she's going toward the high falls. PTZ driver, Honey Bear, is walking around the pond, heading toward the high falls. I will tell you, those of you here at the North American Bear Center that little Holly Bear and Lucky Bear 
the other two bears out, have become best buddies, and if honey pursues this, we may have some behavior possibly chasing each other or maybe honey holly bear getting treed by honey. Don't know that, but we'll see what happens behind these trees here in a moment. We're going to have all three of them behind the trees, at least from my vantage point. I'll tell you a little bit about Lucky. Since all three of them are back behind, I don't know where they're going or where they're headed. Lucky is a seven-year-old neutered male. And his personality trait is he's very curious. PTZ driver Holly Bear is at the rock den. Honey Bear has just cruised all the way around and headed toward the food shed. I believe Holly Bear hid in the little bushes there and avoided being chased by Honey. Smart Bear, she's figuring out how to avoid Honey and why does she want to avoid her? In the wild, it is a matriarchal society, and by that I mean the females pretty much run the show, and that's true also here at the North American Bear Center. Where I said Lucky, who's a male, and little Holly have developed a friendship, and they play together, and we have also observed what, what at least what I believe, is Lucky inserting himself between the two females, acting somewhat as a big brother, and actually fending off Honey. If you notice now, PTZ driver, you've noticed Honey. Holly Bear is at the High Falls running across the pond. Holly Bear is going to her deadfall. PTZ driver Holly Bear has gone to her deadfall. She's still on the ground. Not unexpected. She does not have Lucky Bear near her. Lucky Bear is at the food shed. Honey Bear is right out front. Lucky Bear is a bear who um, came from Wisconsin. He was, a, he was taken out of his uh, den of his mother by some human, possibly attempted to be domesticated or raised in a family environment. He was subsequently taken to a rehab facility in the state of Wisconsin and deemed unreleasable. And the options were somewhat limited. So we, in 2007, in July of 2007, became Lucky's forever home. Holly Bear has a similar background. She comes from Arkansas. She was born of a wild mother, separated from her mother by a wildfire, taken in by a family and raised in a family environment. That's not really what you want to do with a bear. Uh, taken away by the authorities. Also sent to a rehab facility, again deemed non-releasable. And we have become Holly's forever home since December of, of last year, 2013. Both Lucky and Holly would have had the chance to stay in the wild had it not been for human intervention. Honey Bear, a little different story. She's the oldest bear here. She was born on a game farm, so she's never known the challenges of the wild. I usually get asked how long bears live in captivity versus the wild. Well, they certainly can live longer in captivity than in the wild. In captivity, hopefully they will always have a good food year, since humans are doing the caregiving. They have access to veterinary care, and they don't have to worry about cars or trucks running them over. And certainly they don't have to worry about hunting if they're in a hunting state. In the wild, of course, they have, they have potentially hunting. They have cars and trucks that could hit them on a highway or freeway. They have no access to any health care, veterinary care. And of course, the food years vary 
from year to year. Here in the Ely area, the last two years have been exceptional food years for bears. And in fact, there's many people here in the last year, year or two in the summertime have said, gee, we don't hardly ever see a bear. That's because they're out foraging, because that's what they want to do. And there's plenty of food out there. They prefer the wild food. Three years ago, Ely had a very, very, very poor food year. And there were far more sightings of bears three years ago because they were just looking for food. People always ask, what do we feed our bears here at the North American Bear Center? Well, first, number one, I get every, just about everything from the local grocery store. And a lot of it we would eat. And I'll just list off a few things to give you a sense of what they eat. Romaine lettuce, carrots, apples, peaches, pears, plums, grapes, avocados, of course, you saw watermelon, mixed nuts, a variety of nuts. Uh, we use a lot of peanuts, both in shell and out of shell here. Dried cranberries, dried avocados, and when we can get them, dried blueberries, dras dried raspberries, and strawberries as well. Everything we buy for them is fresh, produce, and their appetite actually, or their preferences change during the summertime. And we accommodate that. All of our bears here at the Bear Center don't necessarily like the same things, but I will list off a few items that they all seem to enjoy. They enjoy a, a raw egg in the shell. Red grapes is a big favorite here. Romaine lettuce is also a big favorite. And peanuts, unsalted in the shell, also is a big favorite. But we change their diet throughout the summer based on um, what they might be finding in the wild. It won't be too long. We're going to be having some blueberries. And we'll be feeding them blueberries. In the spring, they, they actually really enjoy a lot of romaine. Actually, Lucky has had up to five romaine, heads of romaine in one day. In the summertime, like right now, he may eat a romaine or two, but not much more than that. So their taste change during the summertime, and we accommodate that. We log all their food, and we take note of those items that they don't eat. For example, if we feed them carrots and they leave carrots laying for a feeding or two, we take it off we take it off the menu for a few days and go back to it with that particular bear. Some sources of protein we have here at the North American Bear Center is the raw egg I just mentioned, tuna out of a can, just like you would get at the store, and nuts are great sources of protein for our bears here and only about 10% of their entire diet really in the wild is protein. In the wild, sources of protein become an immature bees. A lot of people think that black bears go after beehives for the honey, and that's just a myth. Yes, they may get honey on the side, but that's really not what they're after. They're after the immature bees. It looks like all our bears have scattered. Yep, everybody is scattered. And what I last saw for Holly, our little little yearling, she is up her deadfall, which is immediately across from uh, us here at the uh, observation deck. And last I saw, she must be at least 15 feet up above the ground. For those of you here at the North American Bear Center, I might point out the white pine on the left. It is the tallest tree on the left of the enclosure and it is a forked top. It is also half dead. Uh, that's true. That is a tree that you might find Holly or Lucky in later today. Uh, Holly has been in that tree almost every day. 
It's a white, as I said, it's a white pine. It is an absolute favorite tree for black bears here in this area. And the reason why is because of the bark is nice and curved, easy to climb, and the bark does not peel off or come off very easily. I just want to give a shout out to our PTZ driver this afternoon for driving our virtual uh, watchers, volunteers, visitors, educators, and what have you out there in, in the rest of the world for driving the camera around for them. We could not do these podcasts without you folks out there somewhere in the world driving our camera. I also want to give a shout out to some lily pad people that are starting to make their way here to Ely, Minnesota. The North American Bear Center uh, will be participating in the Northwoods Bear Foundation uh, Lily Pad 5th Annual Picnic here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A lot of people are coming into town for that, and I've talked to a number of the Lily Pad people, not only the picnic committee, but as well as people participating in the picnic this weekend. If the weather is just half as good as today, it's, we're going to have a fabulous weekend. And we look forward to talking to all of you picnic goers. And if you're still traveling up to Ely, you haven't made it here yet, please be safe in your travels. We're going to be here. And for those of you here at the Bear Center, we are open 9 to 7 every day from now until Labor Day. Your admissions is a day pass. So if you're hungry, you want to do some shopping in Ely, Feel free to do that. We're open here until 7 o'clock, and all you need is your sticker or your receipt, and you can get right back in later on today. Our next worldwide broadcast will be at 4 o'clock this afternoon, Ely time, and I hope you join us for the further activities of our bears here at the North American Bear Center. Thank you very much.